The Puffco Peak Pro 3D Chamber Troubleshooting Tutorial. Whether it's a white, white flashing light or a red, white flashing light, or even just a slight amount of pressure that will disconnect your atomizer, this will solve it. Let's go. When it comes to troubleshooting this issue, it is always usually a cleaning issue. You need to do a deep, deep cleaning on this thing. When it comes to the deep cleaning, I start with the Puffco Peak Pro base. This is because the atomizer needs to soak, and I would recommend using a two-stage soaking system. The reason why you should use two stages is because the atomizer chamber's internal housing is very dirty, and no matter what, if you're using fresh ISO, you're not going to get all of it off, and you might as well ruin some already older ISO before doing a clean ISO soak. This way, the fresh ISO could be used for ISO swabbing with Q-tips for whatever you need to do, and then you can full send use it for the second ISO soaking on the 3D chamber. Now, while your 3D chamber is going through its first ISO soaking in the dirty ISO, you want to do a cleaning on your base pin. I recommend Hempertech or Heady Mops. These Q-tips are much thinner than the Glob Mops, which will help you access all the nooks and crannies of the base pin connector. Now, you can see reclaim buildup on the base underneath the glass cavity, but the repair is extremely dangerous. I would not recommend anyone do this. Go send your puff go to Peak Tweaks or wherever. Honestly, this is not something that everyone should do. You have a high probability of ruining your device. Now that your base is clean for connectivity issues, you now have to clean your 3D chamber. We have it soaking. You got to do some spins, get some agitation going. Honestly, if you don't have the agitation, nothing will come off or less will come off. That is a true fact in my estimations of experience. After you've given your 3D chamber ample time to soak, you're going to do a fresh ISO Q-tip swabbing because there's still isopropyl from the first wash on the atomizer. This is something you want to remove before it dries because if it dries, you'll just have a whole bunch of reclaim film on the exterior of your chamber. This is something you want to get out. You won't be able to get the interior, but that's why we're doing the second isopropyl soaking. But if your chamber still has some reclaim on the bottom grommet where your brass pins go, you should definitely do a second first stage cleaning. This is because if you don't get it off, it'll just dilute into your fresh isopropyl and then you'll have it slowly dry to your atomizer chamber once you take it out and do a drying. If your flavor tastes off and like reclaim after this, you should definitely do another cleaning with fresh isopropyl to remove the film of reclaim that is on your atomizer chamber. Just as you saw in the previous clip with me spinning the 3D chamber, you saw the fresh isopropyl turn yellow very quickly. You could do a couple of these depending on how clean you want it, but just know that the more you do it, the cleaner you'll have it and the better flavor you'll have with your 3D chamber. Spinning or agitating for your 3D chamber is very important. As you can see, there are those black dots of chaz that have come off. We have a better video that we'll be coming out with on how to remove all the chaz off of your 3D chamber, but for now, we're just doing a general 3D chamber cleaning and base pin connector for the white, white flashing light as well as the red, white ambulance light. Now, if you're still having atomizer connection detected issues, you're gonna wanna adjust your bottom brass pins and maybe do an extra ISO swabbing on those bottom brass pins. After ISO swabbing those brass pins, you definitely wanna adjust those pins with some tweezers. You wanna pull them out out from the atomizer chamber just slightly ajar so then when you push it in on the base pin connector of the peak pro base that all connections are good to go if you're still having an issue with your atomizer being detected after a deep cleaning is a hard reset start with holding your peak pro base button for 20 seconds once you see that all the lights have turned off let go and then hold your button for about 10 seconds until it turns back on and has some lights it should work from there. If you're still having some issues with your chamber, try to tighten or loosen your chamber to make sure that it is on properly and making sure that those brass pins on the bottom are connected. After you finish your deep cleaning, you wanna make sure that you have all of your isopropyl that has been in the chamber evaporated out. The way you're gonna do this is through heat cycles. You can see that this thing is not really even not detecting. It is detecting all day. Either way, make sure you go through at least four or five heat cycles. Try to keep it on a low temperature. I'd say 400, depending on what you wanna do, but you know, that's up to you. I'd say start at 400, find your way up from there. Either way, thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, become a member, and beyond that, help support all the work that we do here. Don't forget to check out our live streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're gonna be switching up to Wednesdays, but in general, we have some NFTs that we're gonna be releasing for all of those sweepstakes in the future. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Stay elevated and peace out.